Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landa. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about fibrocystic breast changes. The condition used to be referred to as fibrocystic breast disease till we discovered that it wasn't really a disease. Also was referred to as fibrosclerosis, mammary dysplasia, chronic cystic mastitis, or simply as lumpy breasts, and it's the most common lesion of the female breast occurring in one in every two women. 50% of women will have the changes, yet if we were to carefully analyze the breast microscopically, we'd find that the changes are present in 90 plus percent of women. So it's basically universal. It's considered a physiologic phenomenon. It simply refers to the fact that hormones change throughout the menstrual cycle. And of course, since the hormones change, the hormone responsive tissue inside the breast is going to change depending on what happens to be there, what kind of hormone, and in what concentration. It's not a cancerous lesion, it's not even a precancerous lesion, yet more than a million women are going to have biopsies this year when the diagnosis is going to finally be made, fibrocystic breast changes. Now, it's extraordinarily common, but even maybe more common in women who go through puberty relatively early, menopause relatively late, have irregular or anovulatory cycles, and might be more present in women with PMS. It seems that the lesions tend to begin in women between their mid-teens, late teens to early 30s, Lesions are relatively small, grow in size, so that they're larger in women over age 35. Lesions tend to come and go. They tend to be present at the same time during each cycle in stage one, from the teens to the early 30s. We have some tenderness, some fullness of the breast, especially as the breast approaches the underarm area in stage two, women in their 30s and 40s. The pain increases. They complain of more shoddy and granular and smaller lesions. And finally, in women in their 40s and 50s, there's more diffuse discomfort. And we have the sudden appearance of solitary or perhaps multiple lesions. So we have pain and we have lesions in the breast that are described as doughy. We have the cysts and we have masses. And they tend to occur typically in the same part of the menstrual cycle, in the luteal phase, in the phase between the ovulation and the onset of the menses. Lesions can be present singly or multiply. They tend to come and go. They're associated with pain and tenderness that fluctuates, and it becomes progressively worse until the menopause. So the condition can be described as having fibrosis, firm, rubbery, hard lesions, masses, or cysts that are round and movable and tender and tend to be fluid-filled. Pain associated with the condition? Well, it's usually intermittent because of the fluctuation of the hormones, but in 30-40% of the women, it can be constant pain, dull, achy tenderness that can change to throbbing and burning if a cyst happens to rupture. Pain typically is diffuse and bilateral, but it could be confined to just one area of the breast. And some women complain of the breast or the nipple itself. Itching, symptoms can vary somewhat from month to month. Typically it involves both breasts, but a lesion can be what we refer to as a dominant mass, where you pay attention only to the one lesion that tends to be bigger, tends to cause attention to be drawn to it. The lesions themselves are smooth and have defined edges and they tend to be movable and they're not attached to underlying structures. They tend to be more prominent in the area of the breast as it approaches the underarm or in the undersurface of the breast, the underneath part of the breast where most of the glands are, but could be present anywhere on the breast, tend to feel different than cancer. Although if there's any question, check a week or so after the period and make certain the lesion has improved or gotten significantly better or even disappeared since the lesions tend to fluctuate with the cycle most of the diagnoses are made by the women themselves during self-examination maybe after a shower checking if there's any abnormality or atypicality or if it's not the same kind of changes that you notice every month or if there's some tethering of the skin where it's being pulled down, 
or discoloration or thickening of the skin, then probably a trip to your doctor is warranted. But it's important to note that in that week after the period, the lesions tend to resolve. Now, it's always been said that a discharge from the nipple is an important finding. Well, it can be, certainly, but in one woman in three with fibrocystic breast changes, there will be some nipple discharge. It's scanty, it's milky, it's green, it's gray, or it's black. Could be on one side, or could be both. Could be spontaneous without any pressure, or may be present only when the breast itself is squeezed. Typically, there is no eczema, no rash associated with the condition. Most of the lesions are small microcysts that you don't even know are there. They're too small to feel. But in about 20, 25% of the women, the lesions are larger, one inch to two inches in diameter, present painlessly in the breast, tend to come and go. And remember, the breast is responsive to the hormones so we're going to have a certain kind of fluctuation. The difference between a disease and a physiologic change is kind of arbitrary, and that's where some confusion begins. And certainly women are attuned to breast cancer nowadays. Breast cancer is a scary condition, and they want to avoid that. However, this condition certainly is much more common and is not associated with cancer. It is caused by fluctuation of estrogen that tends to make the epithelial cells grow, progesterone that tends to make the asini or the milk ducts tend to grow, and interestingly, a birth control pill, a combination of the estrogen and progestin, seems to be associated with a reduction in this condition. This condition tends to occur during the luteal phase, during the phase, the second portion of the menses in between the ovulation and the onset of the period and it's during this time that the breast can actually increase in size and volume by somewhere around 15 to 30 percent and then those changes undergo resolution as the hormones switch back around the time of the period. Now the stimulation is mostly due to estrogen and progesterone, but there are a variety of other hormones that act on the breast as well. There is prolactin and thyroid stimulating hormone and insulin and the growth hormone. And all of these changes, all of these hormones tend to cause some change in the breast. When we talk about the prolactin, prolactin is integrally associated with the breast. And it seems that those women who tend to be a little heavier have an increased concentration of body fat or maybe the metabolic syndrome or diabetes or fatty liver tend to have more significant fibrocystic changes than those women who tend to be lean. Now there's the question about caffeine. Is caffeine associated with fibrocystic changes? There certainly is a story that it might be, but sensitivity varies significantly among women. It's not considered to be a major risk factor. So the overwhelming majority of women can enjoy caffeine and it's not going to do anything bad to the breast. The whole story started in 1979, published in 1981 in Prevention Magazine, looking at only 47 women. And these women who said that they might be sensitive, they were asked to stop caffeine. And some women were asked to continue just their normal amount of caffeine. Among those women who discontinued caffeine for the eight-week study, about 65% of them noticed that their signs and symptoms seemed to improve. And those women who did not discontinue the caffeine, only 5% said their lesions tended to be better. However, it was not a scientific study. We have no method of checking to see if those women actually did discontinue the caffeine. It wasn't a blinded study. So a lot of other factors that make the information totally inadequate. So should you have caffeine? If you want, fine. If it seems to cause a problem, obviously stop. If we look at women's breasts and we examine them microscopically, in those women who have not had any kind of symptom, who have not had any cystic lesion or any other disease of the breast, if these women pass on over age 70 for other reasons, and if we examine the breast, 
90% of those women are going to have fibrocystic changes, microcysts, and 70% of those women are going to have epithelial hyperplasia. So they bandy around the words oftentimes. Well, I have epithelial hyperplasia. Or I have atypical epithelial hyperplasia. Are those signs that the fibrocystic lesions are going to get to be cancerous? And the answer is overwhelmingly no. That's a normal part of the variation of the normal breast. And remember, these lesions are not present when we do the breast examination in women who've passed on. Those women haven't had any special lesions, they haven't had any cysts, they haven't had any masses, and they still have these changes. Well, how are we going to evaluate a woman who has some of these changes? Well, the way the breasts are evaluated is mammography, of course. We have the standard mammography, and then we have this 3D, the newer kind of mammography, also called tomosthesis. That's for especially fibrous breasts, it's for detection of lesions in younger women. Then we have ultrasound examination, we have MRI. But with the MRI and with the tomosynthesis, the fancier mammography, we're making diagnosis of all sorts of lesions that probably are not very important, but they certainly scare both doctors and patients alike. So the evaluation is in a woman who's relatively young, maybe the best thing to do is an ultrasound examination. An ultrasound examination, if we've detected a mass, could show a simple cyst. It's always benign, has some thin walls, smooth walls. Or a woman could have a complex cyst. And a complex cyst has irregular scallop borders and thick walls and areas where it seems there's some debris in the fluid. Those are typically biopsied and sent for cytology to make sure that there isn't a problem, that it really is just a fibrocystic lesion and not something more complicated. And then we have a complicated cyst. And a complicated cyst is in between a simple cyst and a complex cyst. It has the smooth walls and sometimes the walls are thicker than normal, but it doesn't have any debris inside the cyst. Well, how do we evaluate if it's appropriate there's the fine needle aspiration biopsy. We can drain the cyst, send it for the cytology, or if necessary, we can do a biopsy of the lesion. We can do a biopsy with a core needle, or we can do an open biopsy. But this kind of a disease isn't uh, one amenable to surgery necessarily, because remember, it's a diffuse condition. So most women who have fibrocystic breasts don't need any kind of evaluation. The overwhelming majority of lesions that are found in the breast, more than 70% of all breast lesions, are fibrocysts. Now, what's the treatment for the condition? Well, the treatment for the condition, if it bothers a woman, is maybe a well-fitting sports bra. Wear it day and night. Wear it especially during those times of the month when the pain seems to be at its peak. Maybe you avoid some contact sports during that particular time. As far as caffeine is concerned, or salt, or chocolate, or tea, or soda, or fatty foods, or alcohol, there's no evidence to suggest that any of that seems to play a major role. And by the same token, people tell you, well, you should take some evening primrose oil, or some vitamin B6, or zinc, or magnesium, or flaxseed oil, or lactobacillus, these probiotics. No evidence that any of that's helpful. If you want to do something, we would suggest perhaps following those simple hygienic changes, have lots of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and decrease the salt in your diet, get a lot of water. Those are helpful just in general for the pain itself. There's acetaminophen or Tylenol or aspirin or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or naproxen. You can even apply some topical painkiller to the surface of the skin. That might help heating pad or cool compress often is helpful. Estrogen hormone combined with the progestin and a birth control pill is very helpful quite often for women who are a little bit older. Maybe the progestin itself is even more helpful. Helpful in reducing symptoms in about 90% of people. It used to be that 
we used a medicine known as Danazole, but that's got other problems associated with it, and it's sort of out of style right now, thank goodness. Well, there's some red flags that you should see a doctor about. So if you happen to be less than 30 years old and you have a hard mass in your breast and the skin seems to be pulling, pulled down and you have a family history of breast disease, well, you better go and see a doctor. And if the lesion doesn't seem to improve after your period, well, maybe go and talk with your doctor about it. And if you have distortion of the nipple or you have some dimpling of the skin or you have a bloody discharge from the nipple, yeah, you better see the doctor. But as far as fibrocystic disease, is it associated with cancer or precancer? Interestingly, no, it isn't. It has nothing to do with it. And the pathology reports, after you get the biopsy, they always have to mention some kind of a disease. So everybody seems to have fibrocystic breast changes these days. And if you have the epithelial hyperplasia or the atypical hyperplasia, does that mean that the fibrocystic breast is a cancerous disease? No, it is a benign disease. It is not a cancerous disease. Remember, if we search hard enough, we're going to find this condition. And unfortunately, for many women, in order to make the patient, make the doctor happy, going to end up with a biopsy. Anyway, Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.